Good morning, caregivers. It's Monday morning. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia live on Facebook. I hope you saw my little advertisement this morning of what I'm thankful for. And if you didn't, at 8 o'clock each morning, I post a little advertisement about today's show. And I'm going to start telling you one thing I'm thankful for each morning, Monday through Thursday. So be sure to join me at 8 o'clock and then again at 8.15, like you did today. Or you can check, catch us on YouTube, on our YouTube channel called Let's Talk Dementia. Or on our website, guess what it's called? Oh, come on, guess. Let's talk dementia.org. A special thank you to our sponsors. Let's start with editor Beth, Beth Crosby. She is amazing at looking over what you have written, what you've produced, to make sure you're representing yourself in the best way. Editor Beth at editorbeth.com. Life in the Carolinas at www.lifeinthecarolinas.com. Also on YouTube, Life in the Carolinas is the award-winning television show where they say there is never a bad day for a good story. I like that. And also to HD Imports in Rock Hill, South Carolina, located on Flint Street Extension, 803-985-0985, the mechanic of choice for the Howell House, and they repair Hondas, Hyundais, Acuras, Toyotas, and Kias. I said them all just just came right out of my mouth like that. I'm getting better at this, aren't I? <laughs> 803-985-0985 and tell Mike that Carol sent you. If you're interested in supporting our ministry where we can help other folks learn about dementia and no charge to them, then let's talk about it. I could sure use your support and you can email me carol at letstalkdementia.org. Well, today I wanted to talk about a couple of things, and one of them is I'm going to start out telling you um, a little story about Michael and I out for a walk some months ago, and this is before we moved, and we were walking along on this particular day and going by a magnolia tree. And, you know, magnolia trees have become very popular since the television show Fixer Upper because they are the magnolia homes and they always plant a magnolia tree. Well, there is, uh, there are several magnolia trees on the path that we would travel each morning when we would walk. And on that particular day, we noticed that this particular tree had a lot of blooms that are buds that had not popped open yet. So, you know, we've got these little flowers that are going to one day be big, beautiful magnolia blooms. And we commented about that, and we went about our day and thought nothing of it. Well, the next morning, we got up and did the exact same thing, and three or four of those little buds had turned into these great, big, beautiful flowers. In just a 24-hour period, life had changed that quickly for that little bud on the tree, and it changed for Michael and I because we stood there going, how gorgeous is that, and how quickly did that happen? made me start to think about how life can change so quickly. Don't you know that's true? I, that is true. I don't care what you're dealing with, who you are, where you live. I just don't care what parameters you want to put on it. Life changes on a dime. And if you are caregiving for someone with dementia or you're living with dementia, then you know life changes very quickly. One minute you can be experiencing one thing and the next minute be totally confused. One minute you think you understand what's going on in, around you and the next minute you realize you don't. That's true whether you're caregiving or if you're that individual with dementia. Or maybe you're, you're suffering from other cognitive um, disorders or maybe you're dealing with depression or, or some other issues that are affecting your brain. Then you realize life can change very quickly for you. So what do we do about it? Well, one of the things we need to do, I believe, is just learn that life changes quickly and be on guard for that and expect it. Don't expect life to stay the same. If life stays the same and life is not constantly evolving and, and we are not adapting, then we're probably not alive, are we? Because <laughs> that's just not life. Expect life to change. Expect it to change for your LO and expect it to change for yourself. And when we are expecting those changes, they don't hit us quite so hard. I remember when we moved Mama to uh, her skilled nursing community, and we thought, we've, this is it. Mama can stay here until she passes. This is wonderful, very nice community and a beautiful community, and I felt like they were going to take very good care of her. And I do think they took good care of her, but they also asked her to leave. They asked her to leave because she could walk. Now, she walked into that community. They knew she could walk, and she walked out of that community because they didn't want her there because she could walk. Life changed quickly. I mean, we went from thinking we had it all figured out, Mama could stay there till the day she died, it was close to home, to very quickly it took them about 
four, oh, maybe five months before we were moving again. And I'm like, what? No, 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 no. We thought we had this figured out. Life can change quickly, so you learn to adapt. So, you know, you can dwell on the yuck of life. You can dwell on the fact that um, we got to move mama and we didn't want to. That's what I could have done then. You can dwell on whatever it is that you've got going on. Or you can understand that life is going to change and we have to adapt to it. And with our folks with dementia, if we don't enter their world, if we don't accept their reality for what it is, if we don't love them through what they're dealing with, then we're not going to come through on the other side of the day and look back on the day and be pleased with that. So we have to accept our loved ones where they are. Now, I just want to know, is that different than what we should be in our other parts of our world with the rest of the people in our family, whether it's our brothers or sisters or our coworker or our husband? I'm learning, and I'm very slow at learning this, that accepting all people in my world where they are and loving them through what they're dealing with whether it be diagnoses they don't want to hear or difficulties in life, learning to accept them where they are um, is what we need to do. I think I'm pretty good at doing that with my folks who have dementia, and maybe I'm not so good at doing that with my sisters or my or my brother-in-law or, or whomever. My brother-in-law, he's my challenge in my world. He has PTSD, and um, he has bipolar or we're not exactly sure what he has. He's had several diagnoses that we're not so sure about. But nonetheless, um, he's a tough individual to warm up to. Um, he can be very kind and he can be funny, but he can be very grouchy and not happy. And he can say the exact opposite of what I believe he means to say. And he does it intentionally with me specifically. So we went to see him yesterday and he's in his new assisted living here in Florida and it's a wonderful community and breakfast is made to order. You just walk in and tell them what you want and by golly they fix it for you. Uh-huh, it's pretty neat. So I said to him, Ernie, how was breakfast? Same old stuff. Well, same old stuff, he'd only been there two mornings. How could it be same old stuff? <laughs> and I said, was it good? No. I'm like, Okay, let me drop that subject. And then I left and went out in the lobby and did some things. And come to find out, he went in and special ordered waffles and had two of those that were not so good. Yeah. So learning to accept Ernie where he is, that's Carol's challenge. It truly is. But I know that I can't change Ernie, can I? I can't just zap, make him think everything is happy and good and help him realize that he has wonderful things in his life because he just doesn't see it. So I'm trying to accept the moment, to be in the moment with Ernie. Therefore, it lands on me better, lands on him better. May not come out the way I want it. He may not go, gosh, I had two waffles and they were just wonderful. He's instead going to tell me he had two waffles that were not good. And I'm just going to be like, oh, well, maybe they're better tomorrow, right? You enter their world and accept it where they are. Hard for me to do with Ernie. It's easier for me to do with my other folks. I think maybe because it's family. You think it's harder to be nice to family? Well, see, I do. But being nice to my mama, oh, my word, that was the easiest thing I ever did. I miss that little white woman. Mm -mm -mm, I really do. All right. Change the subject a little bit. Change. Okay, that's what we were talking about, how things can change. Well, I want to show you, I don't know if you can see, underneath my eyes, I've got a little bit of bagging. Oh, I hate that. That's just part of aging. Um, and I mentioned to my daughter, who is a physician assistant practicing plastic surgery, that I need an eye lift. And she said, oh, no, you don't, Mama. That's You don't want to do that. Your eyes are not that bad. You need to use this cream. Now, I don't get paid to sell you this cream, so I want you to know that. This is how much I think about this cream. It's just quite incredible. It is called Semantica, and um, I'm going to post a link for it on the, the notes. This will be reposted on Facebook, posted on YouTube, posted on the website. There'll be a link where you can order it on Amazon. It's not expensive, like 30 bucks, and I don't know how long it's going to last, but I'm thinking it's a couple months. It's called Puffy Eye Treatment Enriched with Green Tea Extract. Now, that just sounds like one of those, yeah, right, all you've done is taken 30 bucks out of my pocket. Well, I think my eyes look pretty good right through here, and I should have not put it on and then put it on at the beginning of the show so that at the end of the show you could see. It takes eight to ten minutes and it tightens up this skin around your eyes 
and they look so much better, y'all. Can you see I'm not all baggy? I got a little bit right through here, but not like I had before I put this on this morning. So you have to put it on very clean, dry skin, and you tap it with your ring finger. That's so you don't damage those tissues that are very tender under there. And within eight to 10 minutes, it tightens up. Now, I happen to know my brother-in-law's watching this, and there are men in this world who think, oh, I don't need that. I look really good. Well, I don't know what your eyes look like, Mr. Eric, but I know how old you are. And I bet you got some bags under your eyes. <laughs> so all my male friends, as well as my female friends, as well as those who are caregiving, think about it for your LO. Put a little bit up there, touch them up, make them look so much better. Yep. I think it's a good idea. I can guarantee you if I had have known about this product when my mama was walking this planet, I would have been putting it on here because my mama liked to look good. It was part of who she was. You know, makeup, earrings, necklace, 46 rings, and 27 bracelets. You know, that was just mama. So she would have been very happy to have known that we tightened up the skin around her eyes. Although she didn't have very many bags. She had some good skin. Semantica. I'm going to post it. You're going to check it out. And then you can write and tell me how gorgeous you are. I think I need about a gallon of it. I'm going to put it everywhere. Just tighten up. All no, I don't think so. I, told, I asked my daughter, I said, could I bathe in this stuff? That would be good. <laughs> well, I want to thank our sponsors, Life in the Carolinas at www.lifeinthecarolinas.com, Editor Beth Crosby at editorbeth.com, and HD Imports 803 803-985-0985. And I hope that you will contact each of these folks. Watch the television show, Contact Beth. Go get your car fixed or repaired, and you'll be glad you did. And tell them Carol sent you. Well, today I get to go stand at the DMV, and then I get to go to the tax collector to get our vehicles registered in Florida. Aren't you jealous? No, you are not. Don't be telling me you are. I'll be glad when it's done. So tomorrow is Tuesday, and what are we talking about? Hold on. Let me flip over on my media list that Beth had me make. And tomorrow, oh, it's called I Just Want to Hide. Hmm, I wonder what we're hiding from. We'll talk about that tomorrow. I hope you have a good day. I hope you make your L.O. smile, and I hope they make you giggle. Have a good day. See you tomorrow, 8 o'clock, and I'll tell you what I'm thankful for then. Bye-bye.